On today's episode of Glow Trotting with Trey, learn some stories about Elvis from one of his friends, William Bardall McDaniel. Stay tuned. guy was telling me today he read my book and saw in there about the midget racer and he didn't believe it and later on he saw a picture of the, over at Elvis's house in the driveway then he believed it and now he's seen the, the actual midget that they repaired and having a gracing was the same one that I had at my house back in the 50s we go out and party one night, and I come home about 4 o'clock in the morning, tell my mother to don't wake me up till 3 or 4 in the afternoon, go to bed. About an hour or so later, my mother comes in and wakes me up, says, son, to the telephone. I said, mother, I told you, don't wake me up. I won't sleep. She said, it's Elvis. Okay. So I get up and go and answer the phone. Elvis had the little midget racer. Elvis said, Bartolf said, Bartolf, that's the nickname Elvis gave me the night I met him in 1957. He said, Bartolf said, I tore up the transmission in my midget. I said, okay, wait a minute. I went and talked to my dad. And my dad said, okay, we'll go out and pick it up, put another transmission in there. So I tell Elvis, you know, we'll come out and get it. If we go out, we unload our race car off the trailer. Then we go out to Graceland. We load up Elvis's midget. And about an hour later, we're back at the front gate. Elvis said, y'all couldn't fix it? My dad said, no, we just got another transmission in it. <laughs> and uh, Elvis said, uh, how much do I owe you? My dad said, nothing. He said, every time you tear out a transmission, he said, yeah, we'll put another one in. I got a stack of them my garage. But it had the little V860 Ford motor, little motor, with standard transmission. We'd get these cars, we'd pull them out for the motor. That's what we run our race car. Transmission, nothing wrong with it. We just stack them over in the car. Elvis nearly went through all of our transmissions. All of them. <laughs> nearly went through all of them. But we had a bunch. Wow. So where where would that be at today? Like, how could we find where the shop was? That, that you, was, it was at your dad's shop, right? At our house. At your house. So is your house still here? That was. Yeah, my little brother lives there now. He's out in Fraser. Now the midget that's in the book is you looks real ragged, but now it's been repaired, redone, and it's down at Graceland. A little red midget that Grace has got on loan. It's on display now. Yeah, it's on display down there. That's amazing, man. That's amazing. So you, I, I remember you, Bardal was always a, at all of George Klein's events. You were one of the guys that was always there and supporting GK. Yeah. You and I were just talking, you know, how much we miss GK. Tell about you a little bit about your friendship with George Klein and how important he was over these years. Well, like I got that. I met George in 1955. George had a little dance show up at the hotel where he was at. And I'd go up there and dance. So I knew George about two years before I met Elvis. And I met Elvis at Rainbow Skating Rink in Memphis. That's when he knocked you out. Twice. <laughs> oh, but the third time I knocked him out. You did knock him out the third time. World all knocked Elvis out on the third try. <laughs> and lived to tell about it. <laughs> but uh, George, I'd go to all the different places he would go, different openings and all. We had a friend that done female mud wrestling. I'd, I was the referee, and George Klein was the announcer. And we'd go around different schools and colleges and all do that. Is there any video that exists of this mud wrestling event? I doubt it. That would be great to see. <laughs> yeah. We were coming back to Memphis from, I think it was Martin, Tennessee. 
and two of the girls got in an argument on them. So we pulled over the side of the road and stopped and let them get out and fight. <laughs> you never knew what was going to happen. Y'all let them get out on the side of the highway and fight? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, we used to, we had some fun. Yeah, had some. I know. We missed GK, though. We missed GK. Yeah. Oh, I remember you telling a story one time, and this would be a good one to tell us. Up there at Graceland, y'all had like a, a firework. Oh. Uh, Roman candle fights. It was during the holidays of Fourth of July and New Year. He would buy dozens and dozens of Roman candles. They'd set up tables out back. You'd have half the guys on one side and half on the other. And I was on Elvis's side and we shooting Roman candles and all. And this particular time, I opened my mouth and I swallowed a Roman candle. And so I holler, you know, stop, stop, everybody stop. Everybody stop. I go out to my car and get my racing helmet. She's got the full bubble shield in front. We get out and start doing it again. A few minutes later, Elvis says, stop, stop. He said, come here, Barnall. I go over there. He said, let me see that helmet. I took the helmet off. He had on a yachting cap. He took his yachting cap off and sat on top of my head. He said, I'm prettier than you are. <laughs> so he got to wear it. And the next time we done something like that, we were out back fighting Roman cattle with some girls at the back door, harassing us. After a while, Elvis called with that bar dog. Get you three or four of them Roman candles. So I got three or four and said, well, I tell you, Linda, we're going to teach them girls a lesson. Elvis, them girls are going to run in the house. Don't worry, just do it. Okay. He said, you ready? Yeah. We let them Roman candle. Took off at We're running through Graceland shooting Roman cattle, burning holes in the road. After all over, we're sitting on the steps to go upstairs. He was laughing, he said, yeah, that we taught them girls a thing or two. And I'm looking at the floor and said, yeah. The whole next day, they got a whole new carpet put in. Wow, that's incredible, man. If he wanted to have fun, he had fun. He had fun. Is there, is there any other just cool story that you have that you could share with us about Elvis? Well, okay, we, okay you know, when we leave the Grayson, going to the Memphis Theater, We'd have probably seven or eight cars in a row. And Elvis is leading, he's driving. We go down Elvis Presley Boulevard, which was 51 Highway in Bellevue. Get down the parkway, we turn right, going to the Memphis Theater. This couple come by, this young, young boy and young girl, and the girl sees Elvis driving. And she's telling her boyfriend, move over, move over. She's slowly moving over against Elvis. Elvis is slowly moving toward the curb. I'm sitting about three cars back, and I'm racing automobiles for years, so I pull out. I get up behind him. He never feels me touching. Next thing you know, he's throwing 70 miles an hour down Parkway. Wow. Then I let him go. He didn't slow down and come back either. When we got down to the Memphis Theater, Elvis told me to bought off. I said, I was running out of room. <laughs> I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> but just things like that, you know. It's just amazing things that you have that last you a lifetime of memories, right? Oh, yeah. How do, uh, if somebody would like to purchase your book, is there a way they can contact you? Well, they can purchase it here at Marlowe's. Okay. Or they can get my information from somebody and they can write me or call me. Okay. All right. Well, hey, man, I appreciate you uh, giving us these stories. And if you want to learn more, pick up Bardall's book, A Lighter Side of Elvis. And it's all true. So next time you're in Memphis, stop at Marlowe's and be sure to purchase this book, Lighter Side of Elvis by William Bardall McDaniel. He was Elvis's friends. And as you learn today, a few new cool Elvis stories. Thanks for watching this episode of Glow Trotting with Trey. Don't double dribble. Subscribe. It's free. Stay updated with every new video that I upload, which is once every Tuesday, and special ones here and there. Please like this video if you like it. Share it. 
And until next time, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for watching.